Hi, this is a tutorial to get you up and running on the brand new web-based Eyes on the Solar System. This product used to be a download and install video game, but those are being phased out. And this is the final step, and it's being released now. So the first thing you do is you go to eyes.nasa.gov, as you can see at the top here, and you just click on these banners. There are several banners, multiple products, but we're going to focus on Eyes on the Solar System. Once you click it, this is what you will see. It will load it up in another tab, and I'd like to point out that this works on mobile phones, tablets, it works on other operating systems like Linux. Anything with a web browser, you can play with it. So here you are. First of all, you can click and drag, or on mobile phone, use your finger. You can pinch to zoom, or you can use you can zoom in with the plus and minus buttons over here, or you can just use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. To go really fast, you can hit W to zoom in and S to zoom out on your keyboard. And to go even extra fast, hit Shift W and Shift S. All right, so this is a live look at the solar system. We have time controls here with the current date and time. You can see it is live. However, you can fast forward and rewind. So if I just fast forward, you can see I can click ahead at different increments. You can go as fast as you want. You can go all the way to three years per second. And now you can really see things go fast. And if that's too fast for you, you can hit pause and then just go back to live. So we're back to live now. And I'd like to show you where you can go. You can go to any of 125 missions, past, present, and future. Over here on the right, you have settings, like an info panel. You have layers. I can turn on asteroids, comets. If you want to see Pluto restored, you can just hit dwarf planets, and Pluto is back. And if you want constellations up all the time, just click on them. You can turn on and off spacecraft, trails, orbits, labels, and icons. You can even turn off the user interface if you want it to look pristine. Okay, so let's go into an example. So let's go to Mars right now. Let's see what's going on. So here we have Mars at the present time. This is where all of the orbiters are currently. So here's Perseverance rover. This is its landing site. Here's InSight, and then you can see also orbiters, like Mars Odyssey or Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. So anything you see with the label, you can just click on it and go on in. So here is MRO. It is, in fact, in the dark right now. So I'm going to light it up over here. We have light modes. We have flood lighting. So you can see it when it's on the dark side. You also have shadow lighting, where it's lit a little bit in the shadows, and of course natural lighting, when it would be pretty dark. Let's do flood lighting. And this is the current position of Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. This is, this is the correct size, it's its correct position. And over on the left, you see the panel. So for every single thing you visit, you'll get a description. You'll get an option to turn on higher textures here with HD. You can compare the size. So let's compare size. So as soon as I hit the comparison overview, it'll bring up MRO compared to something like Hubble. You can see their size and compare. And we can go to the next one, James Webb Space Telescope. You can see the relative size of these kind of things. So let's exit comparison mode, and you can do this for almost anything. And then you can change your view option here. We can go above Mars. It'll pull us out real quick so you get a little context. You can go above Sun to pull out even farther. But let's go back to Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter as it is now. You can also turn off layers in the panel as well as the settings on the other side. So if you want to turn off the other orbiters, you can do that. All right, another fun thing is surface maps. If you see surface map options, that means you can get a really nice texture beneath you. So let's turn on a nice global mosaic that was actually collected back in the 70s from the Viking mission. So when you click it, it'll come in and it'll look really nice. There you can see a nice Mars texture, real imagery from a past mission. Okay, so let's go back home. I want to show you some other things you can do. So if you go to the search bar, you can just type in what you want. Let's say 
you're really like Pluto. So let's go to Pluto. So here is Pluto with the real imagery taken by the orbiters, including exploration. So over here below exploration, you can see an event. So let's go look at this flyby back in 2015. This is the first time we took pictures of Pluto, and here is the spacecraft that took it, called New Horizons. So you can actually go to the event in space and time when it happened, July 14th, 2015. Now the clock always uses your computer's clock. So all these rotations are accurate. They are what the spacecraft was doing at the time. We can go to other events, or we can go back, or just use the breadcrumb at the top to go home. Now, I want to tell you briefly about this stuff here on the left. This is scrolly telling. So this is 3D mixed with text to describe very special events. So in this case, it's Voyager's Grand Tour. So on the right, you see 3D exploration of Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 on their Grand Tour of the solar system. You can see the dates down here going by quickly. The Grand Tour of Voyager is an amazing mission, and we want to showcase it with this story. So you just scroll to continue with your mouse or your finger or click on it and now we'll tell the story of Voyager 1 approaching Jupiter back in 1979. And as you scroll down on the left you can see other things over here. You can see like the movie it took of Jupiter. All right so one other thing you can do is go to the menu and here you can just directly select any of this so if you want to look at 220 planets and moons, we even have the minor planets of Saturn and Jupiter, which are quite a few, with these kind of numerical names. So you can just select them. And really exciting, you can see all 126 spacecrafts. So take your pick. I'd like to take you to the International Space Station because it's really pretty. So here we are at the ISS. And this is where it is right now. We can, of course, fast forward. First, I'm going to turn on really nice textures. This is a global mosaic from the day before. So this is real imagery from the day before. We stream it in, and there it is. Those are actual clouds from yesterday. So then you can just, it's a really pretty view. You can even turn this off, move the panel in and out, and just watch it go. This is real time. This is how fast it's going, and this is correct where it is right now. And if you want to see where it's going to go, just fast forward. You can always watch the sunset or the sunrise over the ISS over time. Let's go back to live. And let me show you a past mission. Then I will leave you to explore on your own. So Cassini is a flagship mission that ended back in 2017. But with this program, you can go start to finish. Here we are in October of 1997. And you can go from there all the way to Saturn and all of its events. So it's pretty exciting because we have put in every mission event, including every flyby. So you can actually pick them one by one, or you can sort by target. So for example, let's, let's sort by target. Let's go to Titan. There were over 100 flybys of Titan. I'm just going to pick one. Titan flyby number 28 in 2007. This is what it was. Now on this one, we actually unveiled northern lakes of Titan with the radar. We found methane lakes, and these, these are the radar swaths that showed it to us. Turn on HD so it looks a little better. We go a little slower. This is the real rate as it unveiled this swath and found these lakes. You can also turn on Cassini's map of Titan underneath the clouds. It's visual imagery. So there's quite a lot to do in the past, the present, and the future. So let's go back home. And I want to invite you to explore Eyes on the Solar System. 126 missions in real time. Everyone has a distinct URL, so you can actually embed any single mission into your own website just with an iframe. All right, thanks very much, and happy exploring.